In this lecture, we will be covering the topics of database models um, and also some aspects of the relational database model. So database models are used to describe the structure of databases and it helps us to understand how data is organized, what is the structure of databases. There are many different types of database models. In this course, we are mainly focused on understanding relational database models, but it's also important to have a basic understanding of some of the other common types of models that are used as well. So in order for resources to read, I've assigned you the following links from chapter two, chapter four of the open source textbook that we are referring to. And I've also given you this link here. So this is chapter two, fundamental concepts. It talks about a database and some of the properties of databases. Um, and database management systems, which we will also be talking about. And then you also have the different types of data models that are covered in chapter four types of data models. So this is the other reading. And I've also provided this link, a very short link to introduction to relational databases that talks about some of the basic concepts of relational database models. I wouldn't worry about all the different terminologies here at this point in time, but at least just make sure you're going over the contents here so that it gives you a basic understanding of some of the concepts with relational databases. So database models, they define the logical design and structure of a database. It's like you're looking at different types of building models and designs to understand how that layout of the building is. The same is the case with database models. They define how the databases are designed and what the underlying structures are. Relational databases are the one of the most widely used types of database models specifically for mid-sized to large organizations. Uh, but we also have some other models such as the hierarchical model and network model. So let's just take a quick look at what is the hierarchical model. So this is the hierarchical model. And as you can see here, data is organized in a tree-like um, structure. Um, the hierarchical model was essentially designed from the mainframe database management system. And as you can see, it uses an upside down tree to structure the data. The top of the tree is the parent and it branches out into different children. So each child has only one parent, but a parent can have many children. As you can see here in the case of department, you have course teachers and students as the children of the department um, node. So it does present um, some advantages in terms of managing large amounts of data and expressing relationships between um, information, but it does have some disadvantages as well, because as you can see here, you have only one parent per child. It can be complex and requires users um, to understand the entire physical representation of a database and navigation can be complex um, it lacks a structural independence, so data independence and also having multiple relationships between nodes are not supported in this type of a model. So it does present um, some challenges when it comes to um, these types of aspects of storing and retrieving data. Um, so this is the network model, and as you can see from the figure, the data is organized in a graph and can have more than one parent here. So some of the advantages here is multi-parent support. It can deal with large amounts of information compared to the hierarchical model, and it also improves data access, but it does have um, some disadvantages in terms of data relationships have to be predefined. It's a little bit more complex than the hierarchical data model. Um, also, users still need to have a more uh, detailed understanding of the phys physical representation of the database as well. So the relational database model was developed by Edgar Code in 1969. It's based on relational set theory. It's one of the very more commonly used database models. Um, in a relational database, data is stored in a simple table format, and we'll be looking at examples later on. Um, relational databases are self-describing collection of records. Now, this is important to understand. What self-describing means is that when you look at a relational table, you will be able to understand what type of data is stored in that particular table. And the table is organized as two-dimensional tables. 
Each table holds data pertaining to a specific theme. So we organize data in tables and each table is focused on one aspect or one theme that it's keeping track of. And we join tables together based on common fields. So a major aspect of relational databases are relating tables together and we do join them or relate them based on common fields. So these tables are also known as relations. So this is an example of a relational database table. For example, we call this student. So every relational table need to have a name. And in this particular case, in this example, you're looking at a student's table. Each of the tables will have column names. So as you can see, we have role number, name, phone, and that are no, we need to assign them with column names, or we also call them as fields. And then we also have rows that contain the actual data that we are storing in the table. And these are called as tuples or rows. And this entire thing is called a table. We also call these fields as attributes of a table. So in this particular case, this table has three attributes or three column names or three fields, such as roll number, name, and phone. And it has one, two, three, four. It has four rows or four records. So these are some important aspects to understand when it comes to relational models. So relational database models does present advantages. Um, it's effective with storage. It reduces redundancy because we are breaking data into separate tables and storing them. It effectively manages updates to databases because of the way in which data is organized. It supports for queries. Queries are questions that we can ask in a particular database. So we need to know how many students are enrolled in a particular class or how many courses we are offering. These are examples of queries or questions and relational databases do provide support for questions. And so it's easier to manage and it also supports security features that we can set. So it ensures that we can manage security in a relational database environment. So an important aspect of relational databases as the name goes is that we relate tables together. So as you can see in this particular case, we have three tables here. We're looking at a student table, a subject table, and we're looking at a student subject table related together. So as you can see here, the, this table that we're going to say, for example, is an enrollment table that's keeping track of which student is enrolled in which subject and what's the marks that they're getting in that particular subject. So relational databases, we have these three tables here. And as you can see, this table is the common table that's relating the student and the subject. And we do that by intersecting fields. So as you can see here, we have student ID in this third table. We have subject ID. So this enrollment table is related to the student table through the student ID field. The subject table is related to the enrollment table through the subject ID field. So relational tables are related together through common fields. So let's look at an example here. What are these tables keeping track of and what is the common field in these tables? So here we have two tables. We have the agent table and we have the listings table. So when you look at the agents table, you can see that it has employee number, last name, first name, date, hired, and phone as attributes or fields of this particular table. And then we have listings table that have a number of different attributes from listing ID all the way to employee number. So when you look at these two tables, what is the common field in these tables? So in this particular case, we can say that employee number is the common field in these two tables. So these two tables are related together through the common field, which is employee number. So this is some basic concepts with relational databases that we are trying to understand here.